You know, it's been about half a year since I did a quickie reading. For obvious reasons. I mean, Chris kind of did a thing that most people would disagree with. Considering the fact that it's been so long, maybe we can do a quickie reading every once in a while. And today is gonna be one of those days. Today, we're going over Chris and health. Eat less cow meat. Grilled chicken is healthier. Vegetables and fruit are a must. Walking or jogging is great exercise daily. Standing helps too. Play some Guitar Hero on guitar. You have to stand while playing and move a bit for fun and movement. Chris's ironic advice for Ivan Drago. Chris, as even those with a cursory knowledge of medicine can plainly see, is not in good health, physically or mentally. Considering his obesity, lack of exercise, poor nutrition, refusal to bathe, and the grave uncleanliness of his surroundings, he has an extremely high chance of developing potentially life-threatening medical problems such as cancer, type 2 diabetes, heart failure, atherosclerosis, and possibly a premature death. A rather optimistic depiction of Chris in later life illustrated prior to his Tom Girl makeover. Is it in bad taste to say that we probably all hoped this was what was going to happen? Hilariously enough, this is nowhere near as bad as the real thing. Diet and Nutrition To put it bluntly, Chris is a fatty, yet he denies it, and his food makes him shit himself. Chris has a notoriously poor diet, which partly contributes to many, many of his health problems. If you'd like to know more about Chris shitting his pants, check out my original quickie reading on Chris in his dirty, cramped briefs. Exercise while my body is strong and powerful, I am unable to run fast without losing breath 10 seconds in sonic running speed. According to Chris on the Wikipedia, Chris has not had any regular exercise since leaving high school, and the lack of physical activity has contributed to his already ballooning shape. Since he barely leaves his house and focuses his time playing Vidya, his lack of exposure to the sunlight has left his skin a frightening pallor that starkly contrasts to the dark background of his room while making videos. Also, most fat people have strong, stocky legs due to carrying around all that weight. But since Chris very rarely performs any task more physically demanding than standing up, his muscles have withered away, leaving a body made almost entirely out of fat, as evidenced by his incredibly thin and weak arms that are incapable of breaking wooden sticks and barely capable of tearing cardboard. Do this as I will do to Vivian G if she does not take down every last one of her videos and closes her YouTube account. <laughs> This is for Clyde Cash too, every last one of his family members, including his son idiot. <laughs> When questioned about exercise, he regarded standing up and playing Guitar Hero as exercise. Needless to say, Chris is clearly delusional. In Chris's Parappa the Rapper contest entry, where he foolishly chose to dance, he seemed to get tired very easily from dancing for a mere 30 seconds and even stopped recording to take a break, evidenced by the abrupt change of position. While attending Fridays After Five for a while, he danced in public like a stroke victim, then sat down to rest and play some video outdoors. Despite this, in Welcome to Bollywood, he is capable of dancing for over seven minutes. Whether or not he did this with the magic of jump cuts remains to be seen. All he's missing here is a bald head and a red and white striped outfit. Then he could be the proper strongman. Then again, I don't think any strongman would actually exercise with a 12-pack of lemonade. During the later stages of his infatuation with Casey, many of Chris's videos showed a growing obsession with his own physical power. Chris apparently believes himself to be a nigh-unstoppable testament to human might, and has dedicated several videos to flexing and feats of strength, performing Herculean tasks such as lifting boxes of Minute Maid lemonade and almost doing fake push-ups. He appears to believe that he could have defeated both his rivals Greg Mays and Liquid Chris should it have come to blows and as such had challenged them to fisticuffs multiple times. Now there's an image. Of course, Chris is once again completely delusional about his own abilities. The push-ups and curls he has struggled to do on camera only serve to demonstrate exactly how hopelessly out of shape he really is. He's so fat and his muscles are so small that it's never clear whether he's actually flexing and the fighting moves he's shown are laughably incompetent. Were Chris to get his wish and physically confront Greg or Liquid, he would definitely have his ass handed to him. 
The Idea Guys coerced Chris into getting a membership at an Anytime Fitness gym. In April 2018, Chris uploaded 100, a video of him working out in his bedroom with actual dumbbells of 20 pounds each instead of lemonade boxes. He followed up by taking a selfie at an Anytime gym of him on the treadmill speed walking 4 miles per hour for 2 hours. A couple of weeks later after the treadmill update, Chris was cocky enough about his new lifestyle change to use a put-down of telling other people they could stand to go to the gym to lose weight. You are now blocked. Before continuing to insult me, whenever possible, you should consider going to the gym yourself as I feel you could stand to lose some weight. On the 7th of May, Chris lamented the fact that Weens had been calling up the gym to harass management about him. You jerks and trolls ruin everything. I can't even go to the gym without you harassing the gym that I go to. Later, Emily shared information that Chris had been banned. Chris was legitimately getting complaints from fellow gym goers regarding being gassy and burping a whole lot, so we already had a strike against him for that. Then couple that with people calling them inevitably got him banned. In the Copitz interview, Chris claimed that he had only been banned from the Ruckersville location and was still regularly going to an undisclosed location in the Charlottesville area. Knowing Chris, however, it's likely that this is a lie and he most likely stopped going altogether since the idea guys were removed from power. If he did actually continue to go to the gym, it's unlikely he could keep resisting a secret for very long. Wonking for exercise Yes, the nature today is beautiful, and it was a great temperature for a 4 plus mile walk up the Monticello Trail. Chris The exercise habit of the idea guys stuck with Chris temporarily, as he continued to go on walks, as seen in walking to the post office and him mentioning that he goes on nature walks with his support group. In December 2018, he purchased a treadmill and filmed himself using it. For the first time in a long time, it would have seemed that Chris had started to pay at least some attention to one facet of his health. However, only a few months later, it appeared that he has left the treadmill to rust. In 2018, Chris tried to sell a Fitbit activity tracker. However, no one bought it, and he kept using it. He did 23,000 steps on a walk to the post office and back. In January 2019, he released Fitbit info to the Brony Babes group. Eventually, though, Chris gave up on walking, mostly using the Fitbit to monitor his sleep. Hashtag Brony Babes Chris began 2019 by participating in the Hashtag Brony Babes Challenge on Twitter with the goal of losing weight. He quickly abandoned it though, after a barrage of blocks from fellow participants and voice actors for My Little Pony. Exercise in Jail According to a few jail letters, Chris's primary means of exercise in prison is playing basketball in the recreation room. However, a letter from a Twitter fan known as Eels and the Eggman also shows that he was restricted from the recreation room, though Chris has not disclosed the reason for this. Any other means of exercise for Chris in the prison are yet to be revealed. Hygiene I shower daily. Chris, we know that's not true. Actually, I take that back. You probably do in jail. As quoted above, Chris claims to bathe on a daily basis. However, his propensity to lie and reports from people who have interacted with him suggest otherwise. According to Emily, he reeked of rotten watermelons. Robert Simmons V said that he had a variant of the homeless person stink, and field agents have said body odor masked with gallons of Axe. In fact, it might be that Chris regards Axe as a substitute for a shower. Rosa Chu seems to confirm this belief, as upon being told of the Axe usage, she makes an awful attempt at a suggestive wordplay, suggesting both that using Axe makes Sonichu clean enough for sex, and that cheap deodorant has an aphrodisiac effect on Rosa Chu. It would appear that Chris compounds his hygiene problem by frequently going for days without changing his clothes. Perusal of his videos has shown him wearing the same shirt for several days in a row. It may just be that Chris likes to get into nice clothing to make his videos and as such doesn't get them dirty, allowing for him to use the same ones repeatedly, although this hygienic habit would be at odds with everything else he does. Where Chris marinates in his own filth Note the pale orange-red staining on the improperly clean tiles, suggesting a case of Serratia marcescens bacterial colony, a type of bacteria capable of causing everything from urinary tract infections to meningitis. Oh, that's, uh, that's foul. Focusing on this one stain right here on the shower wall for now. With this shower shine, these paper towels, I'm going to get that spot out. At least make it look better. Here we are. Take a look at that, huh? Stain is gone. Big stain is gone. And give me more time, I can have the rest of it down. The rest of that mess off too. But for this, for this video footage, I just 
concentrate on the one spot for now. The condition of his epidermal system is so poor that it's visibly noticeable even in his low quality videos. The texture of grease that is probably permanently adhered to his skin creates a disgusting sheen that reflects a significant amount of light. The same goes for his hair, which is in such poor condition that when he allowed it to grow out for the Tom Girl pictures, many strands were clumped together in greasy, sticky locks, looking akin to the long beard of a homeless man. Even when washed, it looks exactly as greasy and unkempt as it did before. As seen in the hair difference videos, this neglect will only make his hair fall out even faster than it already is. This lack of cleanliness, combined with the state of his room where he spends almost all of his time, means that Chris and his surroundings must smell absolutely disgusting. Chris evidently simply tolerates the horrible odors, perhaps not noticing them anymore. It may be that he has an abnormally weak or insensitive sense of smell, or has gone nose blind. Few other things would allow such living conditions. Personally, I would say it all just comes down to his laziness. He decided to adjust to his nasty, stinky odors instead of actually, you know, bathing. Go figure. Despite his irregular, at best, use of the shower, Chris is reportedly an enthusiastic consumer of hand sanitizer. Mims and Lucas recalled that he would scrub his hands with germ-killing jellied alcohol after every post-card game handshake at the game plays, doubtlessly offending his victorious opponents. And photographs of Chris at Fridays After Five suggest that he kept a bottle on hand at all times. Additionally, Mims and Lucas said in their Q&A session that Chris didn't have any noticeable B.O. during his time at the game plays, suggesting that his odor problems would only worsen from that time onward. A 2020 tweet suggests that Chris wears the Sonichu medallion in the shower. Crayola fucking model magic and acrylic paint are both porous when hardened, and as such, the medallion will absorb grime such as soap scum and skin cells when Chris showers with it. The medallion has grown more and more filthy and discolored due to the contact with hot water. A November 2021 gel letter has Chris stating that he is highly encouraged to shower daily with Bob Barker or Irish Spring Soap, a towel, and shampoo while in prison, indicating that Chris's hygiene may have improved drastically in recent times. Chris claims that he is very clean. Whether or not this pattern will continue after he's released, with no strict regime or guards to encourage him to shower, remains to be seen. Living Conditions Simply put, Chris has spent many years growing acclimated to living in conditions of abject filth and untidiness. The photographs and videos of 14 Branch Lane Court that he has so unwisely shared with the world showcase to us his filthy bathtub, as well as what happened to be overflowing bins that looked more like mounds of trash, a kitchen sink overflowing with unwashed plates and cutlery, and even an instance of Chris slipping on cat shit. The trolls also managed to extract from Rocky Shoemaker that the house was suffering from some sort of infestation, which led to Bob being quarantined after being brought to the hospital, and Chris being confined to his room to avoid being bitten. When Chris's last video of the house emerged in the months before the fire, it was revealed that the problem had only gotten worse since Bob's passing, with whole rooms literally rendered as inaccessible, and some filled almost to the ceiling with items Barb had hoarded, and other various rooms reduced to crevices carved into Barb's mountains of junk. Even after the fire, Chris and Barb have seemingly not amended their habits, as far as housekeeping goes. Photographs of the rental house revealed a steadily growing number of Lego boxes strewn around, as well as something much more alarming. When Chris was taking photographs of his merchandise for eBay, he inadvertently photographed rat feces on the carpet as well. When concerned customers pointed this out, Chris flatly denied it, even though he had given them photographic proof to the contrary. Moreover, after Catherine visited in August 2014, she recalled seeing junk piled up to the ceiling and dogs not being housebroken and allowed to urinate and defecate in piles of newspaper on the floor. While Chris and Barb returned to the renovated 14 Branchland Court in January of 2015, one can only imagine the reaction of the landlord to the state in which they left the house, which, as of April 2015, was still vacant, probably due to the mess they made. Vision As evidenced by his oversized aviator-like glasses, Chris has a vision problem. Judging by pictures of Chris in his youth, it appears he began wearing glasses around the time he entered high school. The extent of his eyesight problems is anybody's guess. His glasses are often fogged and dirty, thus simultaneously improving and worsening his sight along different feature dimensions. Chris often takes them off when things are getting serious, but often keeps them on to read. This is evident in the video in which he reads a letter from Nintendo and in the future message video. One of Chris's half-brothers, Dr. David Allen Chandler, happens to be an eye doctor whom Chris has seen in the past. The last time Chris was known to have seen him for an appointment was on the 6th of January 2004. Chris's driver's license has a restrictive condition checked, which commonly means that the driver must wear glasses in order to legally drive. Whether his vision contributed to the numerous vehicular accidents he has been involved in has yet to be seen. 
However, it is a good bet that Chris should be wearing glasses while driving, for the sake of those sharing the road with him. In his C-Log 1004 2017 Q&A No More video, Chris's left eye is drooping noticeably, which may imply either an early sign of a stroke or substance abuse. Both of these are plausible due to his obesity and poor nutrition for the former, and his abuse of a black market drug for the latter. The black market drug is Estragel. It's a prescription medication gel that's meant to deal with menopausal problems. Chris apparently thought caking this shit onto his stomach was going to do a lot of good for him. Needless to say, he doesn't need this in his body. Hearing and Speech Little is known about the current state of Chris's hearing, but the autism papers said he suffered from high-frequency hearing loss in early childhood. Chris has also exhibited signs of tone deafness. His musical performances show little semblance of melody at all. Chris is known for his unusual way of talking, which goes beyond just having a southern accent. He mixes up, clutters, and substitutes sounds regularly. He also often talks quickly and slurs his words, and when he doesn't, his voice takes on a staccato rhythm. His voice itself is a very severe deformity, ranging in pitch from normal to the sound of a three-year-old girl on helium all the way to Gilbert Gottfried. It has been medically proven that one of the effects of autism is a lack of variation in speech such as tone, pitch, and accent. It can also work backwards, which could explain Chris's far from normal voice. Autistics often have difficulty distinguishing voice tone. In his Song of Christian video, his voice sounds almost almost entirely normal and even deeper than later years, except for the occasional times where he recalls Conquer of Conquer's Bad Fur Day. This voice deformity most likely comes from the fact he has little to no human interaction. Such isolation has been proven to change a person's perception of pitch, especially if they're autistic. Chances are likely this has become permanent for Chris, given his decades of isolation. Dental Health Chris's fondness for bearing his fangs in moments of tarred rage has revealed substantial dental work, particularly on his back molars, which look to have most of their surface drilled and filled to deal with cavities. It likely seems that Chris takes about as much care of his teeth as he does any other part of his body, and that he'll be needing crowns and other painful, expensive dental surgery sometime later in his life, assuming he lives that long. Although it is difficult to tell, partly due to Chris's awful camera work, in the few instances we get to see his teeth, they seem to be a strange yellow-brown color, which is likely the result of a large consumption of carbonated drinks, poor dental hygiene, and his refusal to visit a professional under the influence of his massive narcissism. He seems to be unwilling to brush his teeth, or even at least chew some Orbit gum. Cardiovascular Health it is known that Chris's father, Bob Chandler, had a long history of heart problems. Knowing this, Chris should have realized he was at a far higher chance of inheriting cardiac disorders and related risk factors. Thanks to his poor decisions regarding his own health, he has made an already bad situation worse. In August of 2013, Chris indicated that the stress he's endured has begun to affect his health, citing a symptom of high blood pressure. In 2016, he implied that he has hypertension. This was later confirmed in August of 2017 when he stated that he takes prescription medicine for it. In September 2017, Chris discussed his new method of growing larger breasts, which involved flavoring his food with soy sauce. As an example, he posted a picture of McDonald's fries doused in soy sauce. It is evident that he has conflated soy-based foods with soy sauce, thinking that the latter would be a good way to boost estrogen levels. In reality, the phytoestrogens found in soy products do not bind to the body's estradiol receptors and thus have no effect on his man boobs. Conversely, soy sauce is loaded with sodium, and said sodium is actually making him fatter due to weight gain and fluid retention, as well as inflicting further damage to his heart, which is already straining under the effects of hypertension. Although drinking water does offset the effects of sodium-laden foods, Chris is too busy slurping on Coca-Cola to even consider adding that to his daily food regime. In January 2019, Chris uploaded the results of a blood sugar and blood pressure screening. Chris's blood pressure is shown to be 121 over 84, classified as pre-high blood pressure. His blood glucose is 63 milligrams per deciliter, and his cholesterol is 140, both of which are surprisingly healthy levels considering his lifestyle. In June 2019, Chris, via his sock puppet account, claimed to have suffered a heart attack and that he went to the emergency room. However, it turned out to have been a case of heartburn. His doctor referred to it as a gastro issue and advised taking tones. Excretory Health Chris has had a long history of fecal incontinence. One factor likely contributing to this is his diet. His continued abuse of his anus and rectum has not helped. Chris also has a history of urinary tract infections, despite the condition being uncommon in men. As mentioned in the previous section, Chris has revealed that he is now putting soy sauce on everything that is not sweet. 
In addition to worsening his renal health, when combined with the laxative effects of his intake of 12 prunes a day, part of the same breast growth formula, this is only likely to result in a higher frequency of dirty, cramped briefs. If you want to know more about Chris's fecal incontinence, check out my first quickie reading on Chris's dirty, cramped briefs. Mental health. Oh boy, this is going to be a fun one. As noted, Chris has a hostile relationship with psychotherapy, so there is little that can be said about what mental illnesses he has. Because autism isn't nearly enough to explain the full spectrum of his abject psyche, many observers have tried to pin down Chris for a variety of mental illnesses ranging from sociopathy minus the increase in charisma, to narcissism, ditto. To schizophrenia, signs include his disorganized speech and writing, loss of contact with reality, and paranoid ideas about being the victim of persecution or conspiracies, such as his delusional belief that Megan Schroeder and Michael Snyder were somehow responsible for him getting banned from Walmart. The one mental failing that debilitates Chris most is his rigid refusal to adapt to his environment. This stubbornness, more than anything else, is what makes him so frustrating to watch. He is incapable of advancing mentally beyond the mind of a 10-year-old with some Playboy magazine stuffed under his mattress. Whatever mental problems he may have are only exacerbated by this stubborn inability to mature or even alter his tactics. For well over a decade, he has been led on by various trolls pretending to be young white women who are interested in a relationship with him, and yet continually falls for it. It is Chris's refusal to listen or learn that ensures that he will continue to live in ignorance, isolation, and misery until he decides to change. It always will, irrespective of whether his trolls stay interested in him. It was once thought possible that Chris didn't feel like his life had truly begun, that he was still in his pre-adult years, because he remained a virgin into his early 30s. And judging by his oversimplified black and white view of the world tainted by fiction and media messages, treatment of women and stunted understanding of sexual relationships, because he saw sex as not a biological or recreational function, or an expression of love, but rather a rite of passage of sorts, and therefore he believed that he wasn't able to truly be an adult until he had sex. Chris would later lose his virginity for real, albeit to a hooker. As of yet, he has made no changes that will tangibly improve his life. In fact, he has been plunging himself and his mother even further into debt to buy toys, of all things, as well as a new car. Needless to say, no one expects Chris and Barb to be able to afford to keep the car for long. Since Chris has been pampered and sheltered from basically all forms of outside influence, he lacks experience in the real world. His reaction to the real world can be best seen in his reactions to trolls. Instead of dealing with them in a constructive way, like taking their advice, or even a neutral way, by ignoring them or getting off the internet, he will freak out, yell at things, blame his autism or the trolls themselves for his shortcomings, and maybe crush a dildo or his camera. He also has a peculiar notion that he is slim, broad-shouldered, and tan, and that he has a full head of hair and is generally not creepy. This image comes from two things. His mother would always tell him how handsome he was. This might simply be Barbara telling her son what all mothers tell their kids. He has an inability to recognize people's faces. For example, during the Blanca incident, trolls used pictures of two different girls to represent Blanca and he never suspected a thing. He thinks that he and Billy Mays would have looked the same if Billy Mays shaved his beard. In high school, he had to remember his own appearance by staring in the mirror, leaving his more youthful image of himself branded in his mind. The fact that the only distinguishing features of his cartoon characters are hair and eye color also point to this, although this may just be Chris being a shitty artist. Eh, I would say it's a little of both. Some people think that, far from being mentally ill, Chris is just misguided and simply needs to be steered in the right direction. However, in the July 2012 arraignment for his and Barbara's actions at the game place the previous fall, Chris agreed to a plea bargain, avoiding felony charges and jail time in exchange for, among other things, mandatory psychological treatment and evaluation, which meant Chris was forced to undergo legitimate psychiatric treatment, as opposed to simply seeing an uncertified pastoral counselor or risk being imprisoned. Given that most, if not all of the problems described above persist in some form or another to this day, it seems that Chris reacted to the psychiatric treatment in much of the same way he reacted to the education system, as it seems that, whatever the psychiatrist said, he took none of it in, probably taking out his anger at being forced to obey the law on the psychiatrist by simply refusing to cooperate. Chris began listening to subliminal frequency hypnosis videos on YouTube in 2016. On the 29th of June, he uploaded announcement 06-29-2016-2, in which he claimed the music cured his autism. Hey fans, I forgot one thing to mention. I have, I've actually been on a subliminal project as a lot of you, or some of you, might have been aware of. 
though my history or whatever that I try to keep private amongst my YouTube settings. But I have been enjoying for the past three months the Get Rid of Autism Subliminal, the one that actually works in three months so less than uh, three times per day, 36 times. I have been doing that I've actually found myself mentally capable. I don't, I do not blink out as much. I feel a bit faster in mental processing and I feel a whole lot better. So with that, uh, I'm essentially cured of my autism. Oh, and I actually have been able to socialize better out in public. So that's another good deal right there. I'm gonna put the link underneath this video. And those of you with autism, try for yourself. Three, play it three times per day for three months. It worked for me. However, in a November Facebook post, he was back to referring to himself as a high-functioning autistic person. Chris mentioned in August 2017 that he takes Valium, a drug used to treat anxiety and nervousness. I took a rest and some Valium after I got home. I feel some recovered, but I feel some mild headache now. Chris, on taking the drug after feeling stress from being told not to wear his unicorn cosplay at church. Sexual health. Bent at a horrifying 45 degree angle, Chris's dunk is a thing of almost unholy terror. While there has been much speculation as the cause of this, possibly Peyronie's disease or the result of engaging in dangerous prone masturbation, it is ultimately a mystery that will probably never be solved. While correctable, the process is expensive, and Chris has other, more important things on which to spend his, or rather taxpayers, money. In correspondence with Jackie, he revealed that he was checked for STDs in early 2010. He didn't have any, you can probably guess why. Gender transitioning, hormone treatment, Normally, transgender people plan out their gender transitions with doctors to ensure safety throughout the process, especially if they are taking hormones, which can cause health issues unless strictly monitored according to the patient's health profile. Unfortunately, Chris has done the opposite. In 2015, he acquired Estrogel, a hormone replacement therapy cream meant for postmenopausal women. It is meant to be prescription only, but Chris got around the requirement to see a doctor by ordering it through offshore pharmacy. Estrogel has health risks, such as fluid retention. Estrogel has health risks, such as fluid retention, weight changes, rise in blood pressure, disastrous for an obese person like Chris, and blood clots. And that is when it is applied properly via a small dosage on the arm once per day. He even managed to fail at following the directions on the package, as shown in Estrogel application and vibrating bra how-to, in which he slathers the cream onto his stomach like buttering bread. Kim Wilson revealed that he was taking hormones in May 2015, and Chris mentioned the drug again as of late August 2016. Throughout 2015 and 2016, he repeatedly complained via Facebook post of feeling dizzy and ill, but has failed to connect the dots and seeing taking over dosages of a black market drug without physician's approval could be a reason for it. In addition to estrogel, Chris has been taking supplements such as vitamins. He purchased a jar of Solaray female hormone blend vitamins in August 2016, which is meant to ease menopausal symptoms. Arthur Spatchcock also learned that around May 2016, Chris was fond of eating Finya Greek seeds because he believed it would increase his estrogen levels, being unaware that it would have no effect on him since he is not on estrogen. At some point in fall of 2016, he finally went to a medical professional and was prescribed HRT. Unclit. One day in September 2014, Chris decided to get a piercing on his perineum. Piercings require constant disinfection while they heal, anywhere on the body, even for very clean people. And so many trolls were concerned that considering Chris's general filthiness and the fact that the location of the piercing would receive very little air, in December, he shared a picture of this piercing which showed that, while it wasn't infected, the piercing had begun to reject, tearing the skin in the process. Making lemonade out of lemons, Chris, now in throes of his trans woman fantasy, noted with pride the tear's semblance to a vagina and actually got it re-pierced, without giving the original wound any longer than about a week to heal. Fortunately, Chris gave up on it after it became clear that the piercing was going to be more hassle than it was worth, and removed it for good before serious harm was done. Self-inflicted taint wound. In July of 2016, Chris posted about a wound on his taint, announcing that he had gotten it as a result of subliminal frequency hypnosis and would be growing a new labia as a result. However, as the man in the pickle suit later discovered, Chris actually went ahead and sliced himself open with a knife in order to free the vagina he thought was growing within him. So Chris was feeling up his junk and he felt something growing in. He believed his labia were growing in. He knew, logically, that he should probably let it, ahem, erupt on its own. Because cutting himself open is crazy and he would probably get in trouble. But one night he was drunk and was sad that someone pointed out he didn't have an actual vagina, so he thought he'd help it along. 
In the morning, he was very embarrassed and sheepish about it. Chris is fucking lucky he posted about it online and got pestered into getting help by Weens, because if he hadn't, he'd probably end up in the hospital, fighting off a potentially lethal infection. So technically speaking, in Chris' logic, it was indeed a wound, but his vagina was going to come out and the wound would heal and everything would be alright. It's kind of like he was a Brundle woman and he was pulling off his old ear and face and shit, and the beautiful Pam Anderson Christine would be underneath, rejected by a blood bank. In January 2017, Chris complained on Facebook that he had been turned away from a blood drive for being transgender. He stated that the given reason was the FDA saw to not accept blood from transgender people due to the varying levels of testosterone and estrogen balances in our blood. Chris does not realize how medically sensitive patients will be when receiving blood transfusions, and it would not be in their interest to be taking blood with hormonal imbalances, especially from Chris, whose blood has been affected by both his unhealthy lifestyle and the dangerous intake of the unsupervised estrogel drug. Other deformities. Chris also has mild heterochromia, which he claims is the result of pink eye medicine that he took in high school. However, in a photo of a young Chris, his right eye is green. He probably tells this story so people think he's special. Some have pointed out that Chris has an unusually wide septum, as seen in his MySpace picture. Others go as far as to say that he lacks one altogether. The cause of this, like his bent duck, is yet to be known. And oof, that was quite the article, but I'm afraid that's going to be it for today's video. If you like what I do, leave a comment, rate, and subscribe. If you want to support me in a more personal way, you can check out the Patreon link and the Teespring link in the description. As always, I've got more content coming down the pipeline. But until then, I'll see you degenerates next time. But wait until you hear this fucking story, dude. It's enough to make you go, I need a beer. Oh, so I guess we're really doing this. Wonderful.